Woo! September's over! We made it. Welcome to my September wrap up. This was actually a better month than I anticipated in terms of reading. I thought I was gonna get like three books done because I started school again at the end of August and I thought there was no way. But we made it and it's not so bad. For September, I actually read seven books and I'm going to do my best to get through all seven because there was some I liked, some I didn't like, and I wanna share them all with you. So strap on your seatbelts, we're doing the wrap up. Just bear with me. The first book I read in September is The Wideness of the Sea. Ooh, pretty. This book is Pretty different for me. I'm not usually the type to read um, like more adultish love style books, romantic y books. Um, and that's not necessarily what this is geared to be. It's to me, I took it as like a woman finding her identity, challenging who she thought she was going to be, who she is and figuring all that out. There are aspects of romance in it, there's aspects of career and life and family and friends, and it just really encompassed all of that for me. The first thing that really stuck out to me when I was reflecting back on this book was, oh my gosh, I need to move to the state of Maine. <laughs> Everything they described about Maine, I was like, done, sold, moving tomorrow. It just sounded so beautiful and it just sounded so beautiful and Katie does a really great job of painting that scene and that scape of everything. It just was so good. What I appreciated about the lovey aspect of this book was that it wasn't like boring and typical. It wasn't predictable, I thought. And throughout the whole book, everybody really has personality and is so dynamic. And because everybody encompassed those qualities, it made me really stay connected throughout and feel something throughout, which feels really important to me in that style of book. I just really loved it. I highly recommend this one uh, because it's so outside my norm and I still really liked it, so check it out. The next book I read was Castle of Water. This, I already talked about how much hype this book got and I was so worried for that because I just didn't know if it was hype because of the author, if it was hype because of the beautiful cover. I didn't know if it was really going to be as good as everyone was making it out to be. There's just so many pretty pictures of it everywhere. I was just like, okay, we'll see. And it definitely met and a little bit exceeded my expectations. I would say the first thing that struck me about this book was the style it was written in. It was written in a very real and interesting, engaging way. Like, like I part felt like I knew the person writing it and I was like reading into aspects of like their journal or something. It, it was just written so real. It wasn't like story like and it felt like I was maybe even just like talking to someone. And the content in this book is that there is a plane crash and two people end up on an island which sounds like the setup of what Castaway was like. I had like fears that it may be like a little bit dry, a little bit slow or boring in the beginning and it was not at all. There is like aspects of survival, there's aspects of romance, there's aspects of family and friends and relationships. This book does a really great job of letting you learn about these individuals while in a very challenging situation. It's hard because I don't want to say too much because bits of the story give away you just gotta read it okay i recommend it the hype is real and i wouldn't steer you wrong in that direction because i can't freaking stand when someone hypes up a book for me and then it wasn't it wasn't anything the next book i read is stella by starlight 
I read this for the Diverse Books Club that I'll link all their stuff below. They have a Goodreads, an Instagram, a Twitter. They're fantastic and their picks are awesome. This was their middle grade pick and I felt like it was the perfect choice. This book gives you so much detail into each of the characters and the situations they go through and experience. There's a lot in this book that is just so real and heartbreaking and challenging and definitely worth talking about and can be challenging to get a middle grade reader to fully absorb, understand, and want to talk about. And I feel like this book does that in the, in the perfect way. It gives you just enough detail surrounding each person and each experience to give you that, that heart pull that you're looking for and, and the message that needs to be delivered. And this book definitely does that. It was really interesting to see how all the characters developed throughout the book and how it all came to a close. I didn't love how it came to a close. I felt like it focused on something that wasn't as impactful for me in reading this, but that's okay. I think that if I was actually a middle grade person that I would have appreciated that and identified with it more. I still recommend it and thought it was a solid choice. The following book I read was Millard Salter's Last Day. I'm gonna be real with you. This book did not meet my expectations. I don't know, I had built up hopes for it, but for me, it was just not great. It was slow, it was challenging to really get into and attach with, and I felt like there wasn't really enough character development for any character in this story. Even Millard, who like, the whole story is about. It has like heartwarming moments and moments that you're like, wow, is this really happening? Is this really going on? Because he's considering ending his life. He's an older man later in life that has lived a longer life and is thinking about ending his own life. I felt like there was an emotional piece missing for me. And there was pieces at times where I was like, okay, yeah, that just hit it, but it wasn't, it didn't grab me enough. So I would be weary before picking up this one. This comes out in November. It wasn't the worst, but it wasn't the best. Meh. Ooh, the next book. I am excited about this one because it was unexpected and I didn't plan on reading it and I'm really glad I did. It is Emma in the Night. And I was reading this along with the Fall Reading Challenge for Booksparks. I'll link all their stuff below as well. That has like completely changed my fall reading game because they have so many solid recommendations that I wasn't even, they weren't even on my radar and now they're on my radar and I want them all. So uh, I definitely recommend checking that out. They have like a whole schedule to follow for throughout the fall season gonna be good. This was also a book of the month choice, which I think is usually a good indicator. It was so unexpected. I went into this blind and I was just immediately sucked into the story. It follows two sisters that go missing and one returns and then they come together to figure out what's going on with the other sister or what has happened. There's so many different like psychological aspects to this. Each chapter goes from character to character and sometimes that's a challenge for me where I like can't sink enough into one character or I struggle to follow along when they switch from character to character but this I didn't have that problem I felt like I immediately knew who I was following when and it just made a lot of cohesive sense to me I feel like it's pretty classic with these kind of like psychological mystery type thrillers that you're like questioning yourself throughout it and what's gonna happen and I was totally doing that and I thought I had it and I just recommend this for your experience. It was like the perfect transition into fall too. This book and the, the next few were like the perfect mid-September transition to October books. So get this one. This is this is a solid pick. The next book I read was also a part of BookSparks Fall Reading Challenge. It is Good Me, Bad Me. I like live for this cover. It is just so good. It's like shiny and creepy. 
this was the perfect creepy transition into fall. It's again that same kind of psychological thriller where a 15 year old girl who has a mother that is a serial killer, she decides that she is going to turn her in. She's then fostered by a family who the father is a psychologist that's helping her through this case. I think I started talking about this book and I had told you guys how it gave me that like my favorite murder vibe and I was just really into it still into it, riding that vibe out probably throughout October. I liked that this was not like super gory. It didn't go crazy into detail where I was like, uh, no. But it still gives you the creeps. You're just, you can't help but picture everything that is talked about in this book. So I just, I really liked that. And each of the characters were really interesting and several of them were very irritating. I found myself being like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna punch you through the page kind of thing. But it's all part of the narrative. It has to be there, I get it. And it just gives you so, there's so much curiosity towards Millie, the main character, where you're just wondering, are you gonna be good or are you gonna be bad? You have to read it. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Last but certainly not least, I just finished this book today, so, I'm still experiencing residual feels from it, but I read They Both Die at the End. And what a freaking setup. <laughs> like I knew I was in for something. And I've of course watched all the reviews and thoughts about it on booktube and I still was like, but I'm gonna read it. If it has the feels, I'm likely reading it or have read it or plan to read it. What was really cute about this was the setup felt like I was kind of diving into this like quirky, cute little indie movie, but that felt really realistic and powerful and builds up into something more. And it follows the story of two boys that have just been notified that this is gonna be the last day that they live and they become each other's last best friend. Oh my gosh, are you sad yet? Because it's a setup. It doesn't matter how prepared you feel for this book. I wondered if I like set myself up to be guarded too, like where I was like, I'm not gonna fall in love with this friendship, give me a break. And then like a hundred pages in, I was just like, needing to know what's next. You can be prepared and set yourself up for anything and it's still gonna get you. I guarantee it. I also highly recommend it. I think it's an important feels to feel because it pushes you into the realm of questioning how you're utilizing your time. It really makes you measure what's worth it and who's worth it and are you living life in the way you want to or to the fullest? And some of that can feel like kind of cheesy and corny. It didn't in this book. I think in just thinking about it, it can. But I think that we should be thinking about it. It's important. This was a really interesting concept that I had never thought about or considered. And I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. I do have lengthier reviews available for each of these books on Goodreads, which will be in the description down below, as well as my Instagram, Twitter, all the things. I did, for the most part, really enjoy all of my reads from this month and would be really interested to know if you've read any of these books, what you thought or felt. I also want to know who's doing the Book Sparks Fall Reading Challenge because I want to talk about it. I want to follow along with one another. I think it's really exciting. Thank you so much for listening along and I will see you in October.